All right, you guys know the drill. It's summer school questions that literally nobody asked me to answer, but I'm going to answer them anyway. Um, I'm. You may have noticed I'm in a rush already. Um, that's because I wasn't actually planning on making this, but I saw a comment that I really goddamn wanted to answer because it annoyed me because I've spent a lot of time looking at this. So with that out of the way, let's just get right into it. Okay, so I actually have been over this one already, but I've wanted to give it the attention it needs because I know I have another video called the most ridiculous post in all of Reddit. Um, this is actually the most ridiculous post in all of Reddit. Um, so let's go over it and I'll really quickly go over the other two. Team diff is a real thing. People who said that otherwise are straight up lying. Okay. Um, people always bring up statistics and say stupid shit like the other team gets the same percentage of bad teammates that you get. Okay, number one, we're talking about mathematics. So I want to be very clear and establish a premise here. I want to establish what is meant by this because it's very important everybody's on the same page. So usually, or pretty much always, when people say something along this line, what they mean is if you have, if you are better than most players in your elo, you will climb, even if you get bad teammates occasionally. Because the chances are, um, I mean, you have five unknown factors in the enemy team, four in your team, but you, you have you, and you are better than most people in your elo, so you're a known factor, so you will climb. Something along those lines. I explain it poorly, but everyone knows what I mean, okay? Um, so I hope this guy accepts that premise because that's what everyone else is talking about. And this thread is complaining about what other people talk about. That is what people are talking about when they say this. So if you disagree, that's your fucking problem. You're arguing against a straw man. Um, with that premise in mind, people who say that obviously have zero understanding of mathematics. Here's the first problem of many. Um, if we accept this premise or something vaguely similar to it, um, then this is just obje objectively the case. It is just objectively the case that you have a way higher chance of climbing. Certainly after you play a, a certain number of games, I don't know what the barometer would be, but you definitely have a higher chance of climbing. And if you don't understand that, you do not understand even the most basic of maths, even just really, really basic high school level maths, for Christ's sake. Um, just because the odds should be the same or similar doesn't mean the dice actually fall that way. Okay, so number one, it's not a dice roll, it's a weighted coin toss. But of course, if you were to call it a weighted coin toss, you'd have to accept that you actually deserve to be in your elo. I'm going to say you, because I, I, it's, you're probably talking about yourself in this post. So I refuse to believe you made this on behalf of someone else. You probably just think, oh, I'm so unlucky, blah, 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 and you're trying to explain it. Anyway, let's talk about the math, because I have done the math for this. I have. You want to talk about math? I've done the math for this. Go on my Reddit history. Um, it might not be on this account. If it isn't, let me know, and I would do a separate video. Again, just for you, I would do a separate video talking about math. I've done the math on this, okay? You have the premise I did in that post. It was on this subreddit, by the way. Um, was a player is better than everyone in his elo, or the vast majority of people in his elo. He has 500 games, and he has a negative win rate. It doesn't matter what the negative win rate is. Just He does not have a 50% win rate. It's somewhere below 50%. Um, and you can do this with the binomial. I think I did the binomial cumulative frequency. Or binomial cumulative frequency formula. Um, and it's somewhere along the lines of you have a higher chance of winning the lottery twice than being this player. Think about that. A higher chance of winning the lottery twice. I didn't know that was unmuted, sorry. Um, do you know what that is? It's because you, you are flipping a weighted coin and you're having to lose it more than 50% of the time with a sample of more than 500, for Christ's sake. Think about that for a second because you have to multiply these probabilities together. Um, keep in mind, by the way, if you have a 50% win rate, you will climb. So already it's pretty unlikely that you don't get it at least 50%, <laughs> for Christ's sake. Um, that's why it's so low. I think I actually did the calculation quickly. Um, so this is in percentages. This is probably wrong because I just did it very quickly. It is a 0.00038% chance that after 500 games of being better than people in your elo, you have still not climbed. Of course, there's a lot of factors I did in the original post, um, a lot. But that's a very rough calculation to give you an idea. To give you some kind of idea, I believe the chance of winning the lottery is 0. 0 0.4, 0 0.004, something like that. It's definitely higher. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Now I want to address this stupid lightning thing. And again, if you want me to do the math, I'll do a separate video for it with the actual factors. Um, there have been people who got struck by lightning multiple times in their lifetime, but somehow the sub can't fathom the concept of being unlucky with teammates. Nobody said this. Nobody said this. I, I think you're purposefully ignoring that so you can live in this delusion world that you actually just are this unlucky. Of course there are people who are stuck in their elo after 500 games and they actually don't deserve to be there. Obviously there is. But you know why no one's talking about it? Okay, I'll give you three reasons why no one's talking about it in the subreddit. Number one, it's because I'm pretty sure it's against the rules to talk about it in the subreddit. I'm not going to read the rules right now, but I'm pretty sure there's some rule against not just fucking sitting there. It's a, it's a constructive subreddit for learning the game. It's not a subreddit for complaining. But why would they be here for Christ's sake? It's like complaining that you don't see uh, feminism posts in an anti-feminism subreddit. It's the opposite of what this subreddit is about. Why do you expect to see it here? You want to talk about math? Uh, that's the math for you. 
Um, number two, why is it? Why don't we talk about it? Well, maybe because it's so fucking unlikely that it's not even worth discussing. We we don't talk about it for the same reason we don't spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on every building trying to make it as lightning proof as possible. It's because it's so fucking unlikely, isn't it? The same reason we don't all walk around with a lightning rod, uh, you know, 10 feet away from us to protect us or whatever the fuck. It's so unlikely it's not fucking worth it, really, is it? Same reason we don't pack parachutes on every single passenger airline ever. Yeah, the plane can crash, but it's so fucking unlikely. What's the point? Um, that's number two. But number three, which just pisses me off, honestly, this... The third reason we don't talk about it is because how the fuck would you even quantify this? How would you even know who this player is? If you see, just see, an, you, you're looking at an OPGG of, of 10 gold players, and one of them is 500 games, 50 cent, eight, how the fuck would you know that this is the guy who is actually just the 0 0.003 whatever percent chance? You wouldn't know, and you can't quantify it unless you want to go watch every fucking game of League that's ever been played in this guy's fucking history and look at all his teammates as well and quantify that. It's too many variables. You can't even quantify it, so why the hell are we discussing it? We don't even know who the hell this guy is. Whereas... This ridiculous example, being struck by lightning multiple times in their lifetime, <laughs> uh, it's pretty obvious who gets struck by lightning multiple times in their lifetime, isn't it? It comes from the sky, it's really fucking bright. You hear news stories about it, that's why we discussed that a little bit more, because it's fucking obvious. Whereas something like this, it's just completely fucking unknown, for Christ's sake. Nobody knows who these people are. Uh, name one besides yourself. <laughs> um, that's a challenge, actually. Please, name one besides yourself or someone you know. Go ahead and do it. You can't. That's why we don't discuss it, for Christ's sake. So, the sub can't fathom it? Of course they can fathom it. They're just not... They're just smart enough to not sit there fucking discussing it, for Christ's sake. I get that blaming your team doesn't help you climb, and blaming yourself is much a better mindset to climb, but still, it's annoying as fuck and obviously wrong. Well, I get that blaming your team doesn't help you climb, and blaming yourself is the better mindset. Okay, you get that? Good. But then you say it's annoying and obviously wrong, so do you get it or not? Because it sounds like you don't get it. Everything else in the in the post, except this this here, um, says that you don't get it, but then you, you say you get it. <laughs> what the fuck are you on about, man? Please stop saying it nonsense without even knowing the player. Cheers. So the last thing I want to talk about, just quickly, you're talking about yourself, right? I mean, this is obvious to everyone that you're talking about yourself. Um, I hate to break it to you, man, but every other bronze player who has accepted that they are in ELO hell, just like you, who were delusional at one point, I say were because most people just snap the fuck out of it, they've also thought this. They've also thought this exact thing. They've also thought, you know what? I know that it's the math is really unlikely. I know, yeah, yeah I get it. I have a higher chance of climbing if I'm better. But I really must be the unlucky one. They all think this. The difference is two. There's two differences. Number one is they snap out of it eventually. And either they improve or they quit. They snap out of it. And number two, seemingly all of them until now were smart enough to not make a fucking Reddit thread about it. And at, le at least if they were smart enough to make a Reddit thread, dumb enough to make a Reddit thread about it, they won't say stupid shit like, you have zero understanding of mathematics and try and give reason to it because it's just so fucking obviously wrong. And again, if you want to discuss mathematics, I will do the video just for you and we will discuss mathematics. I love mathematics. It's a fucking hobby for me. Um, Jesus. So to conclude, I suppose, this is fucking ridiculous. If you think you understand the mathematics, you don't. Please go and just do some basic probability calculations of how, uh, I don't know, how likely it is to lose even a coin toss. Bear in mind, it's a weighted coin toss we're discussing. Even a coin toss um, to lose it more, like, I don't know, 40 times out of 100. I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious the probability, right? Cumulatively, though. Um, it's just fucking so patently obvious that this is wrong, and you are on the next level of delusion. I don't even want to say anything constructive, because you, you, are, you are gone, my friend. This is just fucking insane. So, fuck this guy. Honestly, this guy's beyond help. Um, unless he just goes and studies math or something. Uh, we'll move on to the other two guys. I think my head's going to explode from stupidity. Uh, and yeah. Okay, flex queue versus high rated players. Does this, does this transition anything of value to solo queue? I really want to answer this question actually, because I know a lot about this. This season started pl I started playing exclusively flex with high ranked friends or mid platinum to higher. Um, okay, I guess you're gold. You've never placed past gold, so I guess what is silver, gold, whatever. Uh, and the quality of our game seems to be quite a bit higher. Yeah, it will be. We'll discuss why. I feel like I perform okay, and I often outpace junglers, and I'm matched against. Who are higher real than me? I have a suspicion that this is a byproduct of being carried, directed, shockled by my higher low friends. Okay. Uh, overall, we maintain blah 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 blah. Okay. We'll address this first, and then I'll actually answer the question down here. Stop. Um. So flex. Let's first let's first talk about if flex is even worth it to play in the first place. Um. Let's talk about the factors where it's not worth it, and then I'm going to give you the only situation it is actually worth it. We'll remove fun from the equation because you're on the summer school subreddit. It's not fun. Maybe it's fun. Uh, we're just talking about learning, right? Here's the reasons it's not worth it. Number one is the quality of players is very low despite their high ranks. You will often find people who are boosted in solo queue to, I don't know, usually usually pe when people pay a lot to get boosted, usually they get boosted to Diamond 4. 
because then they can flex at their diamond, right? And then and then they never play solo queue. So instead they play flex queue or normals. There's a lot of those people in these games. There's a lot of people who just don't take it seriously at all. They treat it like a normal game. Those people, by the way, I do not understand why you don't just play normals because they'll join, this is a tangent, but they'll join a lobby and they'll more or less just fucking soft in the game and they'll be like, oh, it's flex queue. Well, play normals then. What the fuck are you playing flex queue for then if you're just fucking around? But there'll be a lot of those people. There'll be a lot of one tricks just testing shit out because they don't want to lose their solo queue rank. There'll be a lot of those people. Uh, a lot of people just won't be trying at all, not necessarily trolling or anything, they just won't be trying at all. Um, the quality of the place is really fucking low, a lot of the time, number one, which is why it's not worth it to play. Uh, you can also, get, of course, get stuff like, you know, five pre-maids against non-five pre-maids, and it's just not going to translate solo queue at all, because they're going to be playing completely fucking differently. Um, the biggest reason it's not worth it is because of how flex queue works. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I'm, I'm, I'm like 99, 95% sure I'm right. Um... I'm pretty sure your solo queue rank has nothing to do, other than the fact that it displays your skill. You know, if you're higher rank in solo queue, then you'll probably do well in flex because you're pretty good. Um, it has nothing to do with flex queue at all. Um, I know there's for a million reasons, but I'll give you an example. I used to play flex queue um, often, not often, every now and then, with a pro player of mine. A pro, a pro player that I know. Um, and this guy's won the fucking LCS, by the way. Or EU LCS, it was then called. Um, I remember one specific game <laughs> where this guy was playing mid lane and the enemy mid laner was bronze three. It was a flex game. He was bronze fucking three. And you know, we'd be lucky for the enemy mid lane to be gold when we play with this guy. Um, so it just doesn't fucking translate because the, the skill disparity is ridiculous. If you can manage to get to, I don't know, plat in flex queue, right? Just plat four in flex, in flex queue. You will be frequently put against master, challenger, certainly high, often high diamond, at least diamond two players. In pretty much every single game, you will see at least a Diamond 2 player or higher. I've had Challenger players in my fucking Gold 2 flex game. So at that point, it really does become a fucking coin flip and a half. It's 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 a joke. Um, so it's really not worth it to play just because of that. Now, let's talk about the only situation that is worth it to play flex queue in. The only situation it is worth it in um, is if you want to learn something from these higher elo players like i said if you can make it to i don't know high gold ish flex queue low plat and you go and play solo you'll have a pretty high chance a pretty good chance of seeing a i don't know high diamond player and if you're lucky they won't be trolling the game they won't be boosted they won't be soft in thing they won't be off off rolling or whatever and they will shit stomp you into the ground and you can learn a fuck load from that now of course you can watch other people's games and you know i don't know spectate high elo players but it's just not the same as actually being in the game and feeling it and feeling the pressure that this guy you can't watch a game and feel the pressure that someone is exerting on the map the same way you can when you're playing it. That is when it's worth it to play flex queue. Get yourself, I don't know, gold flex queue and then go and queue solo. You will you will experience that and you will be able to learn from it if you want to. Um, it's up to you if you learn from that. Now, the other thing, shot calling. I really want to talk about this because this is... I have a shit ton of experience with this. Um, he said it's because... He said he's worried about um, his high early friend shot calling him and he thinks that, you know, I think I'm only doing well because they're shot calling me. Now... The whole shot calling thing in flex, I'm I'm the I am the shot caller. Okay, I have a group of IRL friends I play with. Um, most of them are you know low bronze or low silver, high bronze ish, somewhere around that. A couple of them gold. Um, and whenever we play flex or clash, I'm the de facto shot caller. I make I make the calls, right? And I would say that is probably honestly a bad thing. We win games because of it, but in terms of individual you know growing and them learning, it's probably a bad thing because most of them, pretty much all of them, with the exception of two people. Um, they just blindly follow what I say. Um, and if that's the case, and you're just doing what you're told without actually thinking about it, without questioning it, without arguing about it, or saying, should I not do this instead? Why am I doing this and not this? That's bad. Then that, If you're that person, then it's fucking bad because you're just going to pick up habits without actually having a fucking clue why you're picking them up. Um, however, there is one person in particular um, that when you, not all the time, but a lot of the time, um, I will make a call. Oh, we're going to do Baron here. We're going to do Dragon here. And she will challenge it. And that is so fucking good. That is, If you are that person, you will challenge what this person says or ask a question about it. Why am I doing this? Or why can't I just do this instead? Um, then you will absolutely benefit from that um, because you're learning from it. You're not just accepting it. You're learning from it. You're questioning it. You're building ideas. And I can say, no, I think we should do this. You say, I think we should do this. It's, it's beneficial for all parties involved. Um, so if you're that person, then it is beneficial. If you aren't and you're just doing it accepting what you're, you're doing what you're told blindly then it's probably a fucking bad thing to be honest or it's certainly not a good thing uh so to answer the question does flex uh against players inform solo queue performance at all does it create bad habits overlights on high early teammates carrying etc is it helpful improving gameplay like i said yes um 
if you're high rank, if you can get to like at least gold-ish flex queue, get your friends to carry you gold and then go play some solo games, yeah, that's beneficial. If you aren't just blindly before, if you aren't just blindly accepting what you're told to do and you're questioning it and you're challenging this person, because by the way, they can be wrong. Okay, I am often wrong. Of course, I'm often wrong. Every other person who shock calls is often wrong, but it's that's why that's why in pro play we used to have these players who would just shock call everything and micromanage everything. And if, a lot of the reason was because they were actually pretty good. Um, but there's a reason that pretty much every team now they don't have this shot call anymore. It's a democracy. Okay, everyone throws their ideas out and they challenge it. It's because you can't have one person just doing everything because they're going to be fucking wrong. Unless someone speaks up, then you're never going to know that, are you? Um, so that's what I say on that. Anyone have experience with flex queue grinding, carrying over to Silicon in a beneficial way? Um, play fucking Silicon queue. All in all, play fucking Silicon queue. If you want to have fun, play with your friends, sure. Um, if you really, really plateau in solo queue, maybe it can be beneficial to go play flex queue. Just so you can play against these you know, high diamond master challenger players who will shit stomp you. Um, and give you a different perspective on the game. So that's what I'd say to you. I just dropped my gun, by the way. That's why I just twitched. <laughs> that's what I'd say to this guy. Okay, so is focusing on one lane a good strategy as jungle? I'm a gold two jungle main. I usually struggle with macro decisions. When should you camp a lane? Almost never, but we'll talk about that. How can you pressure effectively if you manage to blow up one lane early? Is it better to babysit some carry lane or should you play both sides of the map, counter jungle and such? Any thoughts are appreciated. So I'll try and skim over what basics I can. Because I feel like gold two, you should know this stuff, but then you say stuff that makes me think you don't know this stuff. So just off the bat, I want to address this. There is no answer to this question. Okay, I'll talk about everything else, don't worry, but there is no answer to this question. I, without matchups, there is no answer to this question. And anyone who tells you there is, is just fucking wrong. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I'm not going to go over examples because I don't even think I need to argue this point. Just accept that. I'm telling you it, it's fucking wrong. Uh, without matchups, it's, I can't answer this question. Nobody can. Um, I'm a go-to jungle man and I usually struggle with macro decisions. Um, it, by the way, it'll become more clear as I explain some things why that's the case. Um, when should you camp a lane? So first I want to talk about what is meant by camping because I think high low versus low elo players have a very different definition of camping. I have two definitions of camping. Um, my actual definition of camping would be something along the lines of, not it doesn't have to be splitting that, but something like when you, uh, the map is split. Okay, You have, I don't know, pretty good matchup for your top lane you split the map you're a strong jungler you split the map and uh you take a top side camp and you gank top and then you take a bot side camp and you gank top um you're not completely ignoring everything else on the map you're spending most of your time in top lane i would consider that camping i don't think a low elo player would i think low elo players have a different edition of camping and this is anecdotal but um i used to do it with a friend of mine i've told this story a million times on my other videos um i used to do it with an irl friend of mine previous irl friend of mine um and whenever we got bored we do what we called rumbling we call it we called it rumbling because the first time we did it was against the Rumble. Um, and essentially what it was is, I think this is more the low elo definition of camping. Because I, I never ever got accused of camping when I was smurfing in low elo, like silver gold, before I started doing this. Um, but essentially what we do is, we would basically lose the game just, just to gank top lane over and over again. It's the easiest lane to gank, kind of. Um, it's the most isolated and no low elo jungle ever goes there. Um, I would... Yeah, I don't know, fucking start in the bush, start in the bush and then gank, and then we would go stand in the bush between the two towers and then gank again and again and again and again. I wouldn't even take my fucking camps. Or if he was jungling, he wouldn't either. That is what I think low players call camping. Uh, by the way, never do that, because every time we did it, we both agreed in champion select, okay, if we're doing this, we're going to lose. He'd say, yeah, that's fine. Um, that's what I think low players mean by camping. So if that's what you mean by camping, the answer is never. Never do that. Never, ever neglect the entire map just for the sake of one lane. Uh, now let's talk about that's going to become more apparent why you should never do that. Um, this sentence interests me. Um, how can you use pressure effectively if you manage to blow up one lane early? Well, it completely fucking depends on the matchup. It completely depends on the matchup. That's why I said that you can't answer this question because it completely depends on the matchup. Um, it is extremely rare that the right call is to hard focus one lane and one lane early and neglect everything else on the map. Very fucking rare. And if you're in that situation in the first place, honestly, you're probably going to lose the fucking game anyway because you just lost in champion select because it's just so easy for them to win at that point. All they have to do is just not feed that lane too hard and they win um, just by default. However, um, there's a, few, a lot of things you have to consider when you gank and you're deciding which lane you should be focusing around. Um, the two I would consider if I was you and you're a low player um, is number one, how much is my gank in this lane going to affect this lane as a whole? For example, um, suppose it's kale versus daris top lane kale's gonna fucking hate her life in this matchup right and sure she's gonna spam ping you for a gank but realistically if you spend your time your time is extremely valuable as a jungler um if you spend your time ganking this lane is it gonna change the lane for her 
No, it's not. I mean, maybe it makes it a little bit easier for her. It relieves a little bit of pressure, whatever. Maybe you blow his flash and kill him. Great. But in the grand scheme of things, is it going to make a difference? No. Darius is still going to win the lane for the time being. And you're going to have to gank several times before that changes. So no, that's not a good investment of your time. Um, suppose it's the other way around. And you have the Darius in your team. Um, maybe you don't even need to gank. But if you first blood this fucking Kale, if you think she was losing before, she is screwed. And that gank was so much more efficient than if it was the other way around. Even if the result was the same. You know, you killed them, first blood, flash. Even if the result is the same, the, the efficiency of it is way higher. So that's one thing you really need to consider when you're ganking a lane. Another thing to consider um, is particularly when you're playing, this is something you really have to consider when you're playing junglers like Jarvan, um, or maybe not Lee Sin, but junglers like Jarvan, um, Elise, these traditional junglers that have a really, really strong early game but tend to be a little bit shitty late game. Um, you need to consider... Can this person do my job for me? Because you need to realize, Nunu's another one, you're probably going to fall off, right? Even if you're getting fed in the early game, you're not going to have the same impact as these laners who are getting a shit ton of CS and they're getting fed. You're not. Uh, you're not going to be able to carry team fights or anything like that. Um, your champion's just not designed to. Um, so you need to consider, will this guy do my job for me? Um, an example of that is, suppose you have a Pike and or a Rakan bot lane or something along those lines. This lane is now way, way more worth it for you to gank. Why? Because this guy will do your job for you in the early game. You get this support, his support item early. You unlock him from his lane, relieve pressure, um, free him up. He will do your job for you. He will go and rotate. The Pike will rotate. The Rakan will start ganking lanes for you. They'll ward the enemy jungle. It's so efficient to gank these lanes because they will start doing their job for you. And the earlier you can unlock them, the earlier they can start doing that. Um, whereas just a passive mid lane like... I don't know, some really passive ass mid laner, just a fucking R bot, like Malzahar or something. Uh, what is he going to do if you unlock him? Not much. But if you unlock an Ari, you unlock a Zoe, these roaming mid laners, you can start impacting the map early. It's so much better. Um, so that is, I mean, there's a lot of ways you decide on who you should gank and what lane you should gank. But that is, those are two very important factors. It's how much will it change that person's lane? And will they be able to do my job for me? Because I'm assuming you're playing ganking junglers, something like that. Because, uh, I mean, you're talking about focusing on one lane. That's, that's something a lot of ganking junglers do. Um, so back to the third part. Is it better to babysit or carry lane, or should you play both sides of the map? Again, counter jungle and such. Counter jungle isn't... It's not necessarily you think... It's not really something you... Th it's not like Season 4 anymore. It's not something you really think too much about. It's rare that you actually like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go counter jungle here. Usually it's just a reaction. It's reactive. It's, oh, the enemy jungle did this unexpected gank bot lane, and I don't really have anything to answer with on top lane, so I'll take their camps. It's not... It's not really like a style of jungling or anything or a strategy. It's just something that happens. It's a response to something. Um, should you play both sides of the map? This is something I will answer and give a pretty general answer to. You can't play both sides of the map. You can't, okay? Let me try and think of an example. This is just a really random ass example. Would you rather be pretty shit at 15 different instruments or really good at one or two different instruments, or pretty good at like two instruments. I'd rather be pretty good at two instruments. Um, same thing applies here. You can't, you have a limited amount of time, man. You really do have a limited amount of time. You cannot be everywhere on the map at once. You have to concede things. If you if you watch a pro game, you ever watch a pro game, um, a lot of lowly players will be like, oh, why the fuck are they conceding dragon here? Or why don't they contest dragon here? The answer is because it's just not fucking worth it. Um, it's just not worth it if you're taking Herald and Topside to run all the way down to bot lane just for the chance of taking Dragon. You can't be everywhere at once, and if that doesn't work, now you're fucking screwed because you've just walked all the way without recalling or doing anything else from top lane to Dragon, and you got nothing from it. Um, the same thing applies here. It's just so risky to try and play everywhere on the map because as soon as you do a gank that fails, now you haven't been farming your camps because you've been running around between the fucking lanes, and the enemy jungle has been farming his camps. Um, it's a waste of your time, often. Um, don't try and play three sides all three fucking lanes ever i mean maybe if you're playing nunu and you're playing a piss low yeah fuck it why not just don't even farm your camps but you can't farm your camps and take objectives and gank three lanes you can't do it you're gonna have to lose one of them um preferably not even farming camps to be honest anyway um yeah that's why i say to this um you can't play all sides of the map and it's completely dependent on the matchups try and think about how it would affect the matchup and how it can affect you as well how much they can actually do and how how if i gank this person do they actually have the ability? How much time will I have to invest in this person before they actually have the ability to carry the game? And if you're finding you're having to hard camp a lane for them to be able to carry the game, it's probably the wrong decision to hard camp that lane because you're spending so much time just for the chance of them being able to carry it. Um, that's what I say on that. I don't expect to do much more of these in the future. Um, the literal only reason I did this is because I read this unbelievably terrible post. I, I just had to, man. I had to um any questions anything like that if you enjoyed the video drop me a comment 
Um, and again, this guy, please fucking drop me a comment if you can't find that post and I'll post it again.